Uh, before I show you why we need interfaces, let's just have a quick recap of what it means to implement an interface. OK, so here's an interface. Uh, it's going to have various abstract methods in, so uh, they're going to look something like that, with uh, no body in there, of course. Um, and uh, here's this class here, which uh, implements that interface. And all it means is it's going to supply a body for uh, that uh, method there, and all the other methods that happen to be in there. Now, uh, one thing to note, of course, is that uh, when it comes to classes, you can only extend one other class. Um, and uh, however, you can implement um, as many interfaces as you want. You just put them in here as a comma-separated list. Now, um, as a general principle, um, classes uh, should restrict the access to their data. Now, um, imagine you're sitting there um, as a class, and you've got all your fields publicly accessible. And what it means is that um, some other rogue class can come along behind your back and change all the values that you've got in these fields without um, you having any control over it. Now, it might even set them to inconsistent values. And then, of course, that's nearly impossible to debug. So, um, of course, that's, uh, that's why you tend to declare all your fields as private, as private as you can. And uh, then, when necessary, you supply access methods. So, if you've got a field called size, what you'd do is you'd um, have a public uh, method called get size and one called set size, which uh, uh, enables it to be um, uh, retrieve the value of it and set it. And in that way, you're in control of how these fields are changed. So you can prevent them from being set to something inconsistent. And uh, uh, this is all um, Java Bean standard stuff, actually. It's not actually part of uh, a language as such, but uh, I thought I'd better mention it. Uh, well, this is an example of how um, interfaces can arise in practice. Now, uh, suppose you've got this um, uh, uh, utility class here, and uh, it's got a method um, uh, called helpful in this case, which um, uh, which all it does is expects to be able to call a few methods in the type which is being passed in, as you can see here. Um, now, if um, helpful forced the user to supply a class instead of an interface, then it will be very, very restrictive, because um, by specifying an interface instead, it can be supplied with any class which happens to implement that interface. And that's much more useful than trying to tie the user down to uh, supplying a particular class. Because here, for example, is our is a source code here, which uh, is going to use this uh, uh, utility uh, class. And um, uh, this class um, C here, of course, um, uh, sits in its own hierarchy of classes that have been specifically addressed to deal with the problem which uh, an application deals with. So that there's no way you're going to want to um, go creating other classes, uh, just that you can use this method in some external utility class. I mean, there's no way you're going to want to do that, especially as it's highly likely that you've got all the data that, that this other class needs already sitting there in your class. So you don't want to go and create another class, pack it full of all the right sort of data and worry about that, just so that you can supply it to this utility class. When you've got all the data here, you might as well just implement this interface, um, do whatever this piece of code requires. Perhaps it does some manipulation on this private data to extract something and return it. But um, you might as well go and do that, and then uh, and then just uh, call, just uh, send yourself off to uh, this uh, helpful method here because it implements this interface. So that's generally why they arise. Uh, now let's take a look at a different way that they can arise. All right, here's an example of uh, how interfaces can arise in practice, and uh, this sort of thing goes on in uh, Swing, where uh, Swing is uh, Sun's um, uh, GUI basically for Java. Right um, now, here's the problem: uh, we've got this uh, button here, a uh, graphical button on the screen somewhere, and uh, we've got this uh, class. In fact, maybe we've got more than one class, which is all interested in knowing when that button gets pressed. Um, because they want to do something, perhaps, when that button gets pressed, which is not unreasonable. And uh, here's a solution. What you arrange is that um, any button, any uh, class, rather, which is uh, interested in knowing when uh, some button gets pressed, has to implement this interface called Action Listener. And uh, that's not very difficult, because it's uh, only got one method in it. 
and uh, what happens is uh, when the button gets pressed uh, we can arrange for that method to be called and uh, here it is down here we implement it and uh, that gets called whenever the button gets pressed and this thing which is passed in by the way this action event uh, are just some sort of details about uh, about the event that happens like uh, what time did it happen uh, was the shift key held down when the button was pressed that sort of detail which is not really important to this problem okay so that enables us to do something when the button gets pressed now the next problem is how do we make sure <coughs> that uh, this gets called well um, <coughs> what happens is um, is uh, somewhere up in this hierarchy um, above J button actually is uh, this method called add action listener which takes an action listener and uh, it um, adds it into a big sort of list of them that it's keeping and uh, when the button gets pressed um, what happens is uh, somewhere up in here um, it goes through all this list of action listeners that it's got and for each one on that list it calls the action performed which is uh, just what you want to happen really and uh, of course we need a way of um, adding stuff onto this list and that's what this add action listener does so uh, down in this class here we uh, take the button that we're interested in and we call the add action listener passing ourselves in because of course we implement action listener now so that gets us put onto the list and there's a way to remove yourself from the list as well called uh, not surprisingly remove action listener and uh, that's how it's done and uh, of course you, you can't possibly do this with glasses it just wouldn't work you'd have problems with the hierarchy down here all over the place so that's why you've got to deal with this uh, these interfaces and that's uh, one example of where they can come in and really be useful uh, now I should mention that um, uh, I, I, obviously I've simplified things quite a bit here um, there's uh, in reality you do a lot of this with um, nested classes and if you want to study swing in any detail you've got to know nested classes so like backwards and there's a like I've done, I done a couple of uh, 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 courses on, on nested classes as well if you're interested um, and uh, uh, this pattern by the way is, is called the um, observer pattern and uh, as you can see what happens is um, it, instead of passing data to the so the method itself you're passing stuff to it so that it can call you back which is uh, kind of a different way of thinking 